Hello, and welcome to Stress Less with me, Jess. Today, I have another special guest, Karen Seymour. Hey, Karen. Hey. <laughs> and let me read her intro because once again, I have an amazing woman on here just rocking it out. So I love, love it. So here we go. Karen Seymour is the founder and social media strategist at Karen J. Seymour Digital Marketing LLC in my neighborhood, down the street, Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. Love it. <laughs> she created in 2017 after a 10 year career as a consultant and project manager. She combined her extensive experience in her business and her love as entrepreneurship to create a service that helped business owners navigate their ever evolving landscape of social media marketing. Breach, girl, breach. <laughs> Karen specializes in growth on LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram partnering with her clients to make a success on social media, both easy and attainable for business owners. She grows on audiences and creates communities of loyal raving fans and customers, which I read some of your reviews. So this is very, very true. When she's not working, you can find Karen shopping online, brunching with friends or spending time with her husband and her fur baby, Roger. Oh, I love that name, Roger, for a puppy, right? A dog? Your dog? Yeah, right? he's, he's not a puppy. He's 10 and he's right oh. here. He's always with me uh, oh, yeah. or one of us. So yeah, he's my, uh, my first employee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine's always sleeping right behind me as well. He's 13. So he's a little bit older, but Aww. he's my baby as well. Aww. But so Karen, I did, I doubt I gave your introduction any justice. So please tell us a little bit more about Karen. So, oh boy, uh, professionally or personally, what let's just do? dive in with <laughs> your mind, girl. If you want to say how amazing you are, we can talk about that. I am amazing. Um, actually I'm really hyped up because I had a mastermind meeting this morning and we were talking about visibility and the women gave me all of this power. So I'm like, yes, I'm ready to do things. Oh, I love um, that. yeah, yeah. Good start to the Monday. Yeah. Um, so I guess more about me um, that's not in my bio is that I'm actually born and raised in Barbados, um, lived here for over 20 years, and actually I was a consultant for over 10 years, an environmental consultant. I had a completely other career. Wow. Um, and when I started my business um, in marketing, it was after I took some classes and um, fell in love with marketing. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about it is that I was in my mid thirties and I thought I was too old to change my job, which is laughable at this point. Really? <laughs> but is. I, yeah, I thought I was too old. People, um, a lot of women, I would say women I work with have that struggle a lot where they're just going, it, I'm too old to make this change. I'm too old to move. I'm too old to get a new relationship. And it's like, girl, age is just a number. Go do you, you know, it is such an, it is just a number and mid thirties is not old, <laughs> like by any means. Oh. And, um, you know, it took a health, a major health scare to really kind of shake me up and make me realize that I wanted to, you know, spend my life the way I wanted to spend my life and not the way that was just comfortable with good insurance. Um, I found something that I was passionate about. I was lucky enough to find something else that I was passionate about. And I made a decision to start my own business. Um, I felt like um, I looked around in marketing and I saw a lot of men. I saw a lot of straight white men. And um, I knew that I, people like me and women and minority women had a place in in the world and and a voice to to be heard so i did my own thing i love that it, the the awareness that you have is so strong because i don't think women realize and this is not against anybody else or whatever how much men straight white men are in populations that we should kind of be in there you go to a women's conference how many men are actually on the stage and you're like are not at a women's conference? You know, it, it's just something that simple that we kind of really overlook. And it's, it's what we're telling ourselves. And you said, you know what? No, I want to do something that makes me happy that I have passion for, and I'm going to go kill it, which is so awesome because a lot of us don't take that quote unquote chance. Yeah. I, I felt at the time, and I think maybe when uh, you're in a situation like that, you're looking around for validation and you just, you don't, 
get it. No. Um, and you're sort of waiting for something to happen to you. Yeah. And I was very much in that space and something did happen to me. <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't recommend taking that path, like waiting for something bad to happen <laughs> to you. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's life-changing to kind of, and it doesn't have to be a job. Like you said, it could be a relationship. It could be litter, a new hobby. It could be anything. Um, but, you know, women need to hear more stories like this, um, you know, to kind of encourage them to take that extra step and try something new. Take the chance on themselves, you know, and see where it got you. It got you to a successful business, which is so cool. Before we get into more about how successful you are, because I saw something on your website, which I think is so cool. But um, I wanted to ask you, what do you feel is a big stressor with a small business owner? One, only one stressor. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I know. There's so many. I know. Oh boy. What are, you, um, what are some common ones that you feel like you come across? I so I most of my clients are female, um, and I think one of the biggest stressors that I see is visibility. Um, and it's something you know, like I just mentioned, um, it's something I brought up with my own mastermind um there's an issue that we were sort of dealing with um I think as women were maybe grew up in a way that we're told to be quiet and to be ladylike is to be quiet um and it's not true but it's something that we grew up with and I'll never forget I, I heard Michelle Obama speak and she mentioned that, like how from young girls were sort of programmed to let our fathers speak first or our brothers or whatever, all of their voices are to be amplified and yours, you just sit quiet. Yeah. And it resonated with me so much, like it's years ago, but it's something that really stuck in my head because it's so true. Um, we, we have space, like we have to make space for ourselves. We have stories that people want to hear about. We have businesses that people want to hear about. We have experiences that people want to hear about. And we're actually doing a disservice by being quiet. So do you feel we get in our, literally in our own way when it comes to visibility? Yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the questions that came up today was, is it a personal thing that's stopping you from visibility or is it business? And I was like, uh, personal. I, I believe in my business. I know I'm good at what I do. Um, it's all me. Yeah. And it's just a matter of getting out of my own way um, and reframing that voice, you know, that's telling you not to say anything or not to speak up or not to do that video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not to make that post, not to ask for help, you know, not to like, when I make that post, is that person going to think this of me? If I make this post, yeah. you know, are they not going to validate me and think I'm smart or know what I'm talking about? And like you just said, I know I'm good at my business. It's that interpersonal voice that I keep telling myself that is stopping me. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's, oh, I, I, you know, it's really easy to tell other people to do it, but it's really, the work is really telling yourself. Yes. Yes. I'm sure you see that a lot too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a huge, a huge issue. I would say the second stressor is taxes. <laughs> <laughs> oh that? man. <laughs> but at that time of year we're recording this. Oh man. Um, yeah. I yeah. Know. They're real. Top of mind. <laughs> they are real. But so I asked Karen, how do you feel you help your clients, women, you know, help with their visibility? What is some, some sort of strategies that you help them with? Well, I think, um, a big part of how I work and how I have uh, structured my team is that we can relate to those problems. It's not, you know, I'm not like, oh, get over that, like move on, like it's not a big deal. It's something that we can talk about. And I find that with clients, when they have a little bit of guidance, meaning if we actually say, here are five things that you can talk about on that video or, um, you know, obviously we do all the caption writing, so they don't necessarily have to do that. But when it comes to like doing live video and, and showing up on camera, actually, you know, giving them the tools and telling them this is what you can talk about just 
set up the camera, set up your phone and just do it. And we'll edit it for you. We'll do the things for you. Yeah. Then they can do it. Then they feel like, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I just hype them up a little bit. But no, it's relatable. We're all, we can relate to it. I was going to say, you kind of go, all right, I've been here. I know what you're thinking. I know the thoughts that you're telling yourself. I still have them sometimes, but when you do it, that accomplishment, when you actually achieve and go, I just did a live video, three people watched it, but you know what? I did it. I did it. And it looks good. And I know what I was talking about, you know, but I think, you know, like you said, I help you structure. I take some of that, the stress of those worries away. Cause I'm going to help you tell you what you're going to say, because you know what you got to talk about. It's just getting people to know that, you know, what you're talking about. Right. And so getting yourself out there, providing that confidence. And like you said, I'm, I'm their cheerleader too. So that that's so cool. I am my client's biggest fan. <laughs> like I will always have them forward. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just need another person, you know, to, to push you forward, to help you take that next step. I think you, you need that outsider person too. Cause I think two things happens with the people that are close to you. Either they don't see the importance or the struggle that you're going through. Cause it's like, Oh, well you just work at home all day. What's the big deal. Or the other people that, are, you, you know, we all have that person, right? Yeah. And I said, I wish everyone could see your face reaction, but it's so true. Oh, I know <laughs> or it's, not, it's, it's falling not. in the middle of the day when it's like, Oh, what are you doing? You're home. So <laughs> I had a phone call the one time like, well, I knew, you know, you were just sitting at home I'm going, you, yeah, but I'm, I'm working now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? But, um, but then the other people that everything you do is good. Every, oh, you're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You know, you have that one that they're just always a cheerleader, which yes, it's great. And you need those too. But I feel like it sounds like you're that balance. Listen, I'm going to be real. It's going to be hard. There's going to be moments where it sucks, but we're going to get through them. And that's what it sounds like you do with your clients to me. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I try to, well, I've created a business where I can be a support um, and be a part of the team, but not, I'm not a yes person. Like if something doesn't work, I'm not going to go ahead and do it because you want it done. It, right. If it's, if it's bad, it's bad, but that's okay. You know, you, you have to do things that don't really work out to get to the part where things do work out. And that's, it's, it's fine. Do it ugly. I think somebody said once. <laughs> No, but it's so true because I think this really leads into what my, my what I fell in love with on your website. You have on your website, um, it says some interesting details. And it says your number of speaking experiences, your how many women you inspired, which are all beautiful numbers, by the way. But the one thing I really love, it says days doing what I love, 1,825 plus. Like, I think that's so cool because, you know, we look back to that big change, that big step we made. And you think about in the 1,000, almost 2,000 days, how many times you fell flat on your face? How many times you're going, what if I just went back to the nine to five? You know, you know what I mean? Like how many times those days happen? And then like you go, no, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep growing this number because that number is freaking awesome. You know, and I think we forget, you know, as we make these changes and make these strives in our life to look back on where we were in the sense of growth and sense of accomplishment. And so I feel like that's really highlights that who you are in the sense of going, I'm awesome. I've had bad days, but listen, I'm awesome. You know? And so I, I just, I, I just love that so much because I don't think we give ourselves enough kudos, but you're showing yourself that I do have these kudos. And I think that's just beautiful. I think it's important, um, to, remind ourselves of those things and like those bad days you know those bad days don't come only once a quarter <laughs> like those bad days come sometimes once a week yeah um I talked to somebody recently they're like yeah I can probably schedule them <laughs> like, I'm sitting <laughs> once a month and it lasts for this long she's like I can just put it on my calendar for when I have a breakdown and it's so true like it, yeah. it's one of those things where you know there's no bigger critic of yourself and your business than you. Oh my God. Yeah. Nobody is more critical than yourself. Yeah. So, you know, that's going to happen. You know, you're going to have those days, put something in place to make you feel good about all of the wins that you do have. Yeah. And don't wait for somebody else to do it for you. That's the other thing. Like sometimes we wait for somebody else to give us that validation which is wonderful. Like, I love when my husband says something like super great. Like, I'm so proud of you. Like, yes. that, like that keeps you going, but it has to be you too. It has to be you. And I say that a lot to my clients. You know, we ask, 
others to help us or love us or show us appreciation, but we stop showing ourselves love and appreciation, you know? And so it, it's, so huge. it's so huge how we, how we take care of ourselves. So Karen, my next question for you is, is tell me about your mission. What's your mission with your business? That is something I wish I could summarize in one sentence. <laughs> I think it's still evolving, yes. but what was important to me is I, I grew up in, in um, small business. Like my dad, my uncles, were my grandfather were all entrepreneurs and small business owners. So it's a field and a, a space that I recognize. And now I myself, I'm a small business owner. Um, and it was important to me to create a place or facilitate a place rather for small businesses and brands to really be able to connect with their people. Yeah. Um, I love that I get to choose who I work with. I get to work with brands that I really believe in and that I'm really excited for and that I'm constantly thinking of ways to do a campaign or what we could do differently or how we can grow their audience. Um, and social media is one of those places where it's a level playing field. You don't have to spend a bajillion dollars to <laughs> have like a giant billboard or something. Um, there is space for everybody to find their people. If you have a good product, if you have a good service and you know that you can change somebody's life or improve their life in whatever way it might be. Maybe it's a pair of shoes or a purse, or maybe it's like, you know, you're a therapist and a counselor mm -hmm. and you're really taking care of people. There are people out there looking for what you offer and they're looking for it from you. And I get to be the conduit and like, how great is that? Right. It's so cool. I, I think, it, and you said so much, cause I think you are a main, what a lot of us struggle with that visibility, getting to the, our appropriate clients, customers, people that we want in front of, cause like you said, social media is free. So we just kind of like, sometimes we just, you know, spray and pray just like, Oh, I'll just post this and do this and hopefully oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 strategy is the number one thing make a strategy think make about strategy. things yeah yeah, yeah and, I, so and it, it's so important I think um you you definitely are one of the biggest things I think a lot of our uh, business owners really struggle with and I think especially now with social media I think it's it's really huge but I think the biggest thing is what you said too is that just because somebody else is doing what you're doing that you know there is a lot of coaches there is a lot of business owners out there people are coming for you and they want what you offer. So I think that's the biggest thing to take home with that too. Um, well, next question for you is, so they're listening. They go, oh my God, Karen is the golden person I need to work with. I've fallen in love with her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is the best way to contact you? Email me um, at hello at karenjseymour.com. That's S-E-Y-M-O-U-R.com. And drop me a note. I'd love to connect with anybody. And you can also find me on LinkedIn. I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn. Um, believe it or not, that's my actual favorite platform. Um, just search for Karen J. Seymour. Again, S-E-Y-M-O-U-R on LinkedIn. Send me a note. I love that. And wherever you are listening to this podcast, whether it's on my website, whether it's on the platform you're listening to, everything's in the notes. So everything's repeated as well. So no stress there. Try to take the stress away, guys. My goal. So <laughs> I definitely, definitely do that for you. But I did warn you before you go, I do have my lightning round. Are you ready? I guess. <laughs> so let's do it. Okay. Here we go. What is your go-to comfort food? Okay. So that is an easy one. I mentioned I'm from Barbados. So anything Bajan, which is the slang for Barbados, anything Bajan, I'll eat it, particularly flying fish and macaroni pie. Yes. You have to Google it because everybody's okay. like flying fish gross. So what, what is even that? But it's delicious. And okay. they just call it flying fish because they swim so fast that sometimes they come out of the water. So it looks like they're oh, flying. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and macaroni pie is just mac and cheese, but like. Sorry, guys, up leveled because it's extra, extra delicious. <laughs> as soon as you said macaroni and pie, I was like, oh my God, this sounds like mac and cheese. Please let it be mac and cheese. <laughs> mac and cheese, but like with che a cheese crust on top. 
and it's with extra sharp cheddar. It is. Wow. So, oh, next time you come to Philly, I should make you some. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Sold, sold, sold. Okay. <laughs> what is that one movie or show that you watch on repeat? You've seen a thousand Eternal times. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Say it again. I cut you off. I'm sorry. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And what's that about? It is Jim Carrey and oh my gosh, I forgot her name, but the girl from Titanic. Yes. And basically they have a breakup and she, no, he goes to get his memories erased of her. Oh, I think I know this. It's great. It's such a cool movie. It was something, a concept I've never seen before because they sort of like rewind time and they're like, they literally put you in the memory and then they show it being erased. It's really cool. It's very, very cool. Um, I've never seen a movie like it before or since, and it's my favorite. Oh, I love that. <laughs> All right, two more. What is your go-to karaoke song? Anything Beyonce. Yes, obviously. Love it. Um, I have to do the hair thing and <laughs> all of it. And like, I really believe I sound like Beyonce, even though I probably sound like a tortured cat, but you know, you can't tell me anything when I have that mic in my hand. I believe it. <laughs> It's like the speaker and us come out. They're like so confident because I have a microphone in my hand. One of those. Right? Oh yeah, for sure. Like in your head, you're like, oh, Beyonce, watch out. But no. obviously. <laughs> and last thing, what is the one thing you do to help relieve your stress? Oh, um, I, I would normally say go on vacation, but uh, thanks COVID that ruined all of it <laughs> for everyone. Um. I would say my new <laughs> method um, post COVID is, you know, I take my dog to the park and we just like have a picnic blanket and, you know, I take my phone or um, my iPad or whatever. And I, I just lay around for one or two hours in the sun. Oh, sun does so much magic. It's crazy. I it's love that. crazy. Yeah. I need, I need it. I need sunlight. It, it fuels yeah. me. It changes my mood and um, we'll just go there in the middle of the day. It's great. That's part about work, having your own business, right? Um, <laughs> Karen, I'm so excited that you reached out. You took the chance to see if I would even, you know, to get recorded and interviewed. So I think that speaks so highly of who you are. You know, I, I, I'm so excited you connected. This is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And, you know, visibility, guys. <laughs> Make it for yourself. Or have Karen help. Or you. her and me. Yeah. What am I saying? <laughs>